So I'm Marky Dragon, and I'm here with uh, Jeff Zatkin. Is that? Hi, all. That is right. And um, what? Okay, so a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your? You were an EQ, right? I was one of the designer. original, original EverQuest designers. I was a guy seven, eight, nine. Hard to tell on the team. Started as a level designer, and then worked into game design. Did all of the magic system. Did a lot of the old um, initial monster population. Worked with the guys that did combat balance. So. There were only five or six of us for the whole game doing wow. all the design. So yeah, that, that's that's pretty cool. That's so we had so a small team um, of twenty-two people did EQ on, and and EQ mm -hmm. is one of the first massive multiplayer mm -hmm. games out there. I mean, there was a couple before, but yeah. uh, it was the first real three D one. You know, I worked on okay, muds yeah. before that. I was a mudder, which helped get me my job working on EQ. Ultima Online was like two and a half. D. Yeah, it was an isometric. <laughs> it was an isometric game, and UO was really cool too. And we learned stuff from them, and you know, they learned stuff from everybody. Pushes each other forward. It's all iter it iterative. So I went to a debate yesterday mm -hmm. that, it was good. that you were in. Yes. Oh. And I, yeah, it was good. And I was really amazed by something. So um, I have been in selling in the second mm -hmm. markets, which is kind of what they call it now. You know, mm -hmm. It used to be RMT, and before that, I don't mm -hmm. know what it was. But uh, I've been in that a long time, and mm -hmm. I never understood mm -hmm. the impact that that has on the games. Mm -hmm. And so tell me a little bit about in a nutshell the impact yeah. that it had on EverQuest when you were there. Mm -hmm. And 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 whether it was positive yeah. or negative. And it, it had both ways and you know one of the very first stories I told in the debate was that the very very first guy we ever saw buy a sword in off eBay in EQ for like 150 bucks. John Smedley, our CEO, called him up. They said, hey, why'd you spend 150? I think it was a Yakisha. You know, why'd you spend 150 for that? And the guy said, well, I'm a lawyer. My billable hours are about X, and mm -hmm. I paid some kid to go get it for me for less than one of my billable hours. And it was completely cool. And we said, wow, hey, man, more power to you. Have fun. Yeah. And it wasn't really something we thought about until a lot of it started happening. And then that brought in things we hadn't anticipated. So backing up for half a second here, you know, if you think about secondary markets, secondary markets only happen around games that have persistent, persistent world, persistent characters. Correct. You don't see it in a Grand Theft Auto or a Call of Duty. You can't really get a secondary market about this. And so if you say, what kinds of games are games with secondary markets? They're games that are either get their money from subscription or from microtransaction ad revenue. For it, which means that the box sale means almost nothing to them, and a lot of the times mm -hmm. it gets given away free. Here, come play three for you know, 30, 60, 90 days. Right. For so that means the way that these companies get their money is by players playing for a long amount of time. For it. That's how these companies make their revenue. And so because of this, you know, in a persistent world game, you keep playing because your friends are there or there's stuff to do. Mm -hmm. if, they're, you know, if you don't have stuff to do, if your friends leave, hey, you don't play there anymore. So what it really means, though, is when you think about it, for these games, the primary way of generating money is keeping people around for a lot of time. So anything that impacts people staying around for a while is costing these companies huge amounts of money mm -hmm. for it. So when you're thinking of it kind of from that point of view, then you, know, you have to say, Grand Theft Auto, you, know, you play Grand Theft Auto for 40 hours, you're done. You play any right. persistent world game. It's about game, how long it took me to finish it. Yeah, any <laughs> persistent world game, People expect to be able to play 40 hours worth of that a month. Yes. And if you think of the dev or team. Or a week. Or a week. <laughs> Average player for us is 20 hours a week. So 80 hours a month. Mm -hmm. So if you think about how much dev time does it take to make the content to play for that, to play two Grand Theft Autos per month, nobody has enough money to make a team big enough to keep all of that going. Yeah. So because of that, what we do in these games is we set you really cool goals that take a long time to get. Mm -hmm. Get your character to this level. Get this really cool item. Get this really cool set of matched armor. Because the only thing that we can really give you that engages you for that amount of time is kind of cool rewards that are hard to get. And this is how these companies make their money. It's and subscription. And that's what I enjoy doing. I love yeah. character building. Yeah, and it, I mean, me too. There's something very visceral about Visceral is a weird word for it, but it kind of is about building your character from scratch and going from the low, you know, low nobody to this high powerful guy with the cool gear and the friends who's done these neat raids mm -hmm. and all of that and got these neat accomplishments for it. And so you go along with this, you know, the primary thing these games do is take up your time and amuse, hopefully and amuse you along the way for that. 
So, as I said, you know, time. Secondary markets very much sell ways to shortcut time. So when you think about it, if I give you a really cool sword, you don't have to go get that. If I give you a character that's right. level 50, you don't spend four weeks playing or five weeks or two years playing to get to that. You're there. So instead of saying, hey, this is something we can keep our average person here for six months at 15 bucks a month, you give them a level 50 player, maybe they stay for a month or two at that. If I gave you the absolute best weapon in the game at level one, and you had nothing other cool on gear you could I, get... I wouldn't have another challenge. Yeah, and you would stop playing. So by people, I would be bored a lot quicker. Right, yes. and so by people selling you and giving you these things immediately and early, you restrict the ability for us to reward you along the way, and we cut down your incentive to keep playing. There's less to do, there's less challenges for you ahead. So that being said, secondary markets hurt these games in that way in that they shortcut the amount of time people play. The other big thing they do is as soon as you get real money involved, you have crime. Yes. You have people who try and hack passwords, you have people who try and rip you off, who do trade scams, all sorts of scams and people trying to make a fast buck get out of this. Think of all the password hacking and account hacking you've heard of. This is all because there's real money involved. And what this translates to long term is customer support issues for the company running the game. Mm -hmm. You know, in EQ initially we said, oh, we don't really care. And then when we started to get hundreds upon hundreds per week of extra customer support hours and had to build up our support staff to support all of these people who are ripping each other off or even who are selling somebody a character, it's like, here, here's your level 50. Guy gets in, doesn't know how to play because he's never played before, comes in, dies, loses his gear, gets everybody around him killed. He calls customer support pissed off. Hey, I just spent $300 on this guy. I lost all my stuff. And we're like... Not our fault. Sorry, guy. <laughs> yeah. He gets people killed around him. They start having a bad time. They have the possibility of leaving. A lot of this doesn't really help the actual game and keep the community vibrant. You want lots of people in and talking to each other and helping each other out. And when you do things like this, you know, to combat secondary markets, so suddenly you have no drop items or things you can't really trade, you know, make you actually go get it yourself. This is so, bad so for the game. Do you think this is why World of Warcraft has all these bind on pickup oh, yeah. items? I hate that. Yeah, and, and why you can't why gold means almost nothing anymore and it's all a token based economy to get your stuff? It's because they want you to actually do it and they want to get rid of the secondary market. Mm -hmm. And so instead of being able to go, I found this cool sword, let me give it to my buddy, because they're so afraid of all the gold farmers and everything else, short circuiting the time people are playing. They have to get rid of that. So you get rid of your altruism, you get rid of all these cool things that come along with a virtual community to help stop the, my company needs to make money to maintain this huge mm -hmm. game. And by selling people these things, you're short-circuiting the time that gets us the money to maintain the game that everybody likes. So I... Uh, and that's I, the short version. But yeah. Like I had said, I, yeah. I've been a big proponent of these mm -hmm. secondary markets. I, I've mm -hmm. really loved them. I've loved, um, mm -hmm. I've loved serving them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I never knew the impact that it has on the customer service end. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> it's, what would you I cannot tell you how immense of a customer support issue it is, because none of those are things like, hey, cool, you're fixed in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, I, I, I understand yeah. the complexity of the, mm -hmm. of the issues. How much would you say mm -hmm. that uh, it cost mm -hmm. uh, EQ to support these issues that were mm -hmm. never thought of in the beginning? I would easily say over the first couple of years, probably millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I mean, the customer support issues, you know, looking at people with the account hacking, the customers we lost because of it, the customers who quit early because of it, the chargebacks on the credit card fraud from all of this that then we got stuck with the bill for. Right. I mean, there's an immense amount of that. And, you know, that's one of the reasons, you know, you want more cool game stuff. You hope that the money the company makes, they're going to put, hey, more designers, more artists. It's sad when that goes to, no, I'm sorry, we have to put it to more customer support. Right. I would rather have more yeah. features in the game, yeah. more content. Instead to, of hiring another 20 guys to answer the phone for this, wouldn't you rather mm -hmm. have another you know, 5 or 10 or 15 is developers? hard to get a hold of in the first place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? It really is. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I, and part of the, the reason it takes so long to get there is because these people who are having to deal with these issues are taking their time for it. So let's flip this around here. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there a way that these secondary markets could survive in a game? Could a game be designed to handle that? I believe it absolutely could, but in some cases I would argue that if it's that important, and again, by secondary markets, 
this isn't me putting something on the WoW auction house or me killing a dragon, taking the sword and you know selling it to somebody else. That's a primary market. That happens all in game. That's supported by the game. It's really hard to get ripped off along the way for that. You know, mm -hmm. that's how the games are built to be played. I, I don't ever want to say you know, hey, it ruins game balance. Screw that for a moment. We're talking about things that cost the company so much money that they can't put in extra cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So you know, primary market is good. And you know, if you really want, if we really think that you know, it helps the game that much to be able to buy a level 50 character or one of these high-end items, I would almost rather see the company figure out a way to do it firsthand and mm -hmm. eliminate all of the scamming and crime and everything that goes with it, and then be able to take the customer support, lower that back down, and put more cool things in the game. So one one thing I you know yeah. have noticed is that like free-to-play games. Mm -hmm they even have the problem of secondary markets and yep. they're selling a lot of items. And a lot of this is because honestly, especially in a North American market, somebody else's time will always be significantly cheaper than yours somewhere mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And there will be people who will pay for convenience, but you know, what people get charged in China is radically different to play than what they get charged here for it. I mean, it's not like they charge them 15 bucks a month in China to play. The market wouldn't bear that. Right. You know, you get charged per region. So you get guys that are paying the company significantly less money who are, you know, bots and other things up and running and have a huge infrastructure set up to support them getting these things very quickly, who are then flooding the game, ruining the economy, and other things that are just bad along the way. Uh, one, one interesting thing in the debate that came up was mm -hmm. a, a way for secondary markets mm -hmm. to um, have uh, some sort of existence mm -hmm with um, the game company controlling mm -hmm. the primary market. Right. Somebody mentioned taking like armor mm -hmm. and adding my guild mm -hmm. logo to it mm -hmm. and it's something yeah. that they designed, something like that. Somebody mentioned, you know, if you had a game that revolved around user generated content, you know, could you have a secondary market for that? And I'd say absolutely, you know, they're not selling anything that is going to short circuit the time of the people that play it. They're actually mm -hmm. adding things that make people really interested and want to play longer or at least, excuse me, keep them amused along the way. That kind of stuff is all fantastic. Then the question is, how do you police that? I mean, sure, the custom armor is cool, but you know, if they're covering it with swastikas or upside down crosses, oh, or I if didn't they're think drawing tits that. on their armor and you're wandering around with that, I mean, <laughs> one of the very first things somebody, not very first things, 20 years ago in the video game industry, some guys hooked up a video camera to an arcade machine and said, hey, in addition to putting in your initials, we're going to put a snapshot of your face in when you do that. Very first arcade they put it in, some guy looked at that, dropped his trousers, and had a picture of his ass next to the initials. That went away. <laughs> That's funny. Part of being a designer is always thinking about the worst possible thing anybody can do with your stuff, and then assuming that at least 1% of the population will be so amused by that and possibly ruin everybody else's experience that you have to design thinking, and it's really sad to say, but what is the worst possible thing anybody could do with any system you put in? And part of not doing that, and it, you know, everybody fails at some point, leads to some of these issues then where you're like, wow, that's a really abusive whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Take that customizable armor. I guarantee you 80% of it would look cool, and 20% of the guys would be walking around with swastika, booty, titty, whatever. I never even thought of that. Yeah. So and that's, I guess at this point, my brain is wired to think about, mm -hmm. how would I abuse that? Right. And because somebody will. So what do you mm -hmm. think the future mm -hmm. has uh, for, you know, games that even haven't, haven't even come out yet, but mm -hmm. um, where, where are we going to be in mm -hmm. a couple of years with second markets? Do you mm -hmm. think we're going to be able to combat mm -hmm. that? or think it's gonna get worse? I think it depends on Western, Eastern, so if we stick to Western for a moment, Western players used to hate the idea of secondary markets, kind of the Magic the Gathering rich kid syndrome. You mm -hmm. don't wanna see come, some guy come in with three grand worth of gear that you think he just kinda of bought and they're like, wow. Well, yeah. he's that goob that comes in at the level 50 that yeah. doesn't know how to control him. So. And then gets himself and everybody else around him killed. Yeah. I think there are le very legitimate cases for people to have secondary markets, hopefully in conjunction with kind of a primary one. But the hard part is we have to figure out a way to get rid of the crime element mm -hmm. that so hurts the rest of the play. I can tell you that our experience mm -hmm. with the, like what, the trading that goes on in our mm -hmm. forums, crime is the worst problem. Yeah. And we've not been able to fix that. And I don't know that it's a solvable problem. 
I don't know that it's going to stop, that secondary markets will, but, <clears throat> you know, if you could, for, if you were playing World of Warcraft and you could say, I'm never going to get another spam message again, anything in my mailbox again, not have to worry about my password getting hacked, or any of that, or have all of your friends have to deal with that, how much better of an experience would that be? You know, the guy who doesn't come mm -hmm. in and clean out the guild locker and sell <laughs> everything there? Yeah. Had that happen? Oh, I mean, I've seen it happen multiple yeah. times. I mean, how sucky is that? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that disrupts yeah. your play, that gets everybody in the guild pissed off. I mean, that's a lot of people unhappy for that one guy's ability to make some money. Mm -hmm. You know, you, say it's high. Say one out of every hundred players really does well in a secondary market. Sell some good stuff, make some money. Should we support his ability to do so to the detriment of the other 99 people? And usually mm -hmm. the answer is no. And this is purely coming from a, this is how these companies make money and can afford to keep the game going and make another one philosophy. Not talking anything about design or balance or anything else. This is how can these companies make enough money to keep doing more cool games? So um, I, I want to thank you for doing this interview. Yeah, it's fun. And I, uh, the debate mm -hmm. changed my mind literally about mm -hmm. the effect that it has on the games mm -hmm. and while it doesn't change my mind that I want to totally get out of mm -hmm. those markets it mm -hmm. does give me inspiration for mm -hmm. trying to find solutions mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the issue um, and that's really what we need I mean it's not gonna go away but it'd be nice to find it a way to make it less onerous for everybody involved mm -hmm. and keep the cost down so that the companies can spend more time making more cool stuff instead of dealing with the crap that comes up with it yeah, sorry. Well, so, Jeff, good luck all future designers out there on that, because we hope you figure it out. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. in, in follow-up to yeah. this, now, mm -hmm. you're not working on EQ any longer, are nope. you? Nope. Spent about six years at SOE, a couple years over at Warner Brothers Monolith, and then founded a data research game business intelligence company that lets people look at large-scale game trends and go, wow, maybe that's not such a good idea to invest $20 million in. <laughs> and we... Just from having a lot of games I've worked on where we didn't go in with enough knowledge, I'm trying to get everybody else enough so that when you go in, you can make games that people really want to play and that sell well because everybody wants a good royalty check. So how would uh, mm -hmm. someone find you if they wanted to... Uh, if they want to look it up, yeah. look for edar.com, E-E-D-A-R.com, or do a web search on my name, Jeffrey, G-E-O-F-F-R-E-Y, Zatkin, Z-A-T-K-I-N. Google it, you'll find me. He's yeah. only one of me out there so far. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks. We now return after this break. <laughs> We're standing right next to a door. <laughs> <laughs> guys with guns. No, he didn't have a gun. Anyway. Really? I don't know. He, he oh. was a waiter oh. or something like that. Anyway, they have the guns. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> fantasy games for you. <laughs>